Welcome to the first edition of Composition and Cartoons. I am your host, Theo Siri, and I'm going to run you through several different rhetorical situations to teach rhetorical theory and rhetorical practice. Rather than sitting here and lecturing you, I'm going to be traveling to different rhetorical situations to show you how these rhetorical strategies work. The first one comes to us from a man, a rhetorician, named Kenneth Burke. Burke describes rhetoric in what is known as the unending conversation metaphor, also known as the Burkean parlor metaphor. He talks about how people enter different rhetorical situations, how they add to it, and how the, the conversation continues afterward. So, without further ado, let's move to the first rhetorical situation so we could learn about the Burkean parlor metaphor. Burke asks us to imagine that you are in a parlor. You arrive late. When you arrive, others have long preceded you, and they are engaged in a heated discussion. A discussion too heated for them to pause and tell you exactly what it is about. In fact, the discussion had already begun long before any of them got there, so that no one present is qualified to retrace for you all the steps that had gone before. You listen for a while until you decide that you have caught the tenor of the argument, that then you put in your oar. However, the discussion is interminable. The hour grows late. You must depart. And you do depart, with the discussion still vigorously in progress. What I, what I just gave you were Burke's own words. The point is that whenever you're entering into a conversation or an argument, you're entering into a discourse that is ongoing and has been going on for some time. You have to first find out what has been said. You'll recall in the metaphor that the conversation was already going on by the time you walked in. If you were to walk in and immediately start arguing without knowing what they're talking about, you're not going to be very effective. Instead, you stood back and you listened. Remember, the first, and I would argue most important canon of rhetoric, is invention. Studying the arguments that are ongoing. Collecting the different arguments in order to, to be better informed when it's time to add your own. Keep in mind that you waited your turn, or you waited when it was a good time to enter into the conversation. You'll learn later that that's kairos, that's the kairotic moment, the best time for which to speak. Earlier wouldn't have worked, maybe later wouldn't have worked either. And then, as you went on, you started building allies against what was generally a common common opponent. Um, and keep in mind that you don't want what uh, John Stewart calls WrestleMania arguments, arguments that are just fighting back and forth without any purpose. So when you're entering into argument, don't think about necessarily who's the winner and who's the loser, but think about it as advancing knowledge, as advancing uh, the discourse about the topic, topic at hand. Fighting against each other just to win would not work. Rhetoric, if done correctly, should be all about the creation and perpetuation of knowledge, persuasion in order to enact meaningful change. Mere arguments don't change anything. Proper rhetoric can change everything. Keep in mind that in the back of the room, I had a bodyguard. That's to remind us that, that rhetoric is often, is always, 
under the influence of power, power that can either create avenues for rhetoric or for change, or power that can stifle a rhetorical moment and stifle the ability for change. So whenever you're entering into a conversation, please always keep in mind where power is within that conversation. Okay, class, that's it for this first episode. Uh, stay tuned for the next one in which we are going to be talking about Kairos and Commonplace. Thank you very much and have a good day.